Locked again! <laughs> From his home in the hills of Highland Park, California, or whatever place is letting him use the equipment for free, Mark Marin. Answering the questions that all of you are asking. Well, at least a few of you. Mark Marin. <laughs> a voice of the people. Some people. He's not for everybody. Mark Marin. It's time for WTF. 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 With Mark Marin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What the fuck, Arians? What the fuckers? WTFers? Sorry about the vulgarity, but it is the title of the show. Got a very good show today. My friend Caroline Ray, the exceptional, the exceptional, the exceptional, the exceptional comedian and dear friend of mine and very funny and a little crazy. Maybe I'll bring that up with her. Uh, we'll be on the show in just a few minutes. Also, let's get some business out of the way. I want to thank, hold on, let me have a sip of coffee. Let me have a sip of justcoffee.coop coffee where you can go to the website, put WTF in the coupon box and get 10% off. Hold on, let me just take a sip. Pow! Uh-oh. I got it. I'm going to have to hold it. Hey, you can email us at WTFPod at gmail. Twitter.com slash WTF pod. And as always, I'd like to, uh, to thank Brendan McDonald, who sits beside me and produces this goddamn thing every fucking week. What the fuck? Thank you. Let's move on into the show. I got to be honest with you, folks. A lot of people out there don't know me quite as well as some of you. So I want to get people up to speed. I, as many of you know, I went through a, a pretty nasty divorce. And it was a two-year process, and it was awful. And I understood why the woman left me. I knew why. Okay? I understood that. Did not understand why she had to set out to bankrupt me and destroy my life financially. And one thing I'm learning, there's a couple of things I'm learning, is that for a while there, all I was thinking about was, like, what the fuck? Why does she need to do this? She, you know, she could have been fine. And then I got into this spite thing where I was like, oh, I'll show her. I'm going to, I'll show her. And all of my energy and mind went into how I'm going to show her. I'll show her. I'll make her upset. I'll do. And the horrible thing about that is I had this huge realization, like you could be sitting there thinking like, oh yeah, oh, she's going to regret it. And they could just be living their life and not thinking about you at all. And that is horrible. That's really what it comes down to, is how can you be with somebody for so long and then they just don't think about you at all? Well, here's what happened. I went through this horrible divorce and granted, I, you know, I was no, you know, I was no, uh, angel about the divorce. You know, there was a fight. There were lawyers involved, but, uh, I, I tried to, uh, to be as respectful as possible. And somewhere during the divorce, I decided to do a Google search. And I guess the name, like, you know, the internet is, is tremendous for research. So I think the name of that research project I will call, Who's My Ex-Wife Fucking? That would be the title of this research project. So I get on Google. I type in my wife's name, my ex-wife's name. Then I'm brought to a photo gallery from an event in New York. I find a picture of my ex-wife and some guy, the name is underneath. So I Google search his name. Then I'm taken to an IMDb page. Okay, so he's a, a screenwriter of some sort. Then I'm taken to his Wikipedia page. Then I find out he's Harvard educated, comes from a rich family, has a script deal with a major studio, writes on a major television show. The only thing I didn't find during my research project was actual video of them having sex, stopping in the middle to turn at the camera and go, ha, 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 Mark Marin, what are you going to do now? I'm not saying that that doesn't exist, but I, I surrendered my search at that time. That was a completely unnecessary search. I mean, what the fuck was I thinking? What did I think was going to happen? You don't need to do that search. That search yields nothing. There's two searches you don't ever have to do. Anyone that resembles that one and one that follows a moment where you're feeling around somewhere in your body and you go, oh, what's that lump? Oh, Google, lump in armpit. Don't do that one. They're never going to take you to a place that's uh, going to be good. They'll both metaphorically take you to the same place. In that moment, you will believe it will be confirmed that something inside of you have no control over is, is destroying you. All right. So that aside. So now I have this information. All right, and this is going back probably about six months. I know exactly who she's dating. And then I find out they're engaged. A little quick. I mean, a little fast. Am I wrong? A little fast to be engaged. 
I'm not judging. I'm not saying anything went on behind my back. I'm not saying that she was having an affair. But it's a possibility, but I'm above that. What difference does it make now, people say? I'll tell you what difference does it make. It makes difference in the halls of Marin judgment. Okay, so this is my fear. I spent six months literally obsessed with the idea of running into my ex-wife and her boyfriend and what's going to happen during that interaction. What is going to happen? Am I going to cry? Am I going to yell? Am I going to be holding a yoga mat? Am I going to have a cat in a carrying case? What's going to happen? How can any of the scenarios be anything but painful and awful and make me feel like a small little man? Then a miracle happens. Let's go to another area here. And this gets back to what I was talking about at the beginning, about dating. I get an email through my website during this time. All right, an email. I don't know who it is. It's a woman saying, hey, I met you once. Uh, shook your hand. I'm in a position to do more now. I'm in town for two weeks. I'm in Brooklyn. Thought you might want to get together. So I'm single. I don't know her. It came through my website. I say, of course I do. When and where do you want to meet? And then I freak out a little bit. And I write another email. Wait, who are you? I'm thinking Brooklyn. Is she a you know, middle-aged Orthodox Jewish woman in trouble? That's where I went. I don't know why. And I'm not, I don't want to be holding any wigs down. So I email back. I say, wait a minute. Uh, what's your story? And she goes, well, uh, I make a living uh, off my image. I'm getting a little long in the tooth for that. Uh, I grew up in New Mexico. I live here now. And I'm like, I live in New Mexico. I don't know what long in the tooth means or what making a living off your image means. But it can't be that bad. So then I Google her name and I'm brought to a website where they have models. And there's a model who's in is a portfolio of stuff for magazines with her name. And I'm like, okay, who's fucking with me? Real funny. Who's, who's punking me? Who's, wh- 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 what am I getting into? This is a joke. This woman is not the woman who's writing me. I'm not stupid. So I agree because I'm figuring, well, look, if someone's punking me, maybe it's for a show on YouTube. I don't know. So I go, yeah, okay, let's meet. And I go to meet this woman and it turns out to be her. And I'm amazed and I'm like, oh my God. And literally we go out for coffee. She says, look, uh, I, I really like you. I've liked you for a long time. I heard you were divorced because you said it on television. Uh, I'm around. I thought you might want to hang out. I'm in a relationship, but it's sort of an open relationship. And I just wanted to spend maybe a, a, a week or so with you just hanging out. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. Of course I want to do that. And it was spectacular. It was just beautiful. She's, she came to my apartment. It was like a French movie. You know, we danced naked. We fed each other things. Uh, yeah, I sat in the kitchen, uh, smoked a cigar, nude, and she was dancing around. It was one of those things where I don't know if you've ever had the moment where you realize that it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't get any better than what's happening right now. I hope to God you have moments like that. Because I'm watching her dance to some samba music. Is that the word samba or samba, sambo, uh, m- m- mambo, mambo on the little radio on top of my fridge in my kitchen. And I'm just sitting there and we're laughing. And I'm like, this is ing- incredible. And then it was so sweet because I knew she had to go. And it was so it was so French movie ish. And I said goodbye. And she was like, good luck with your life. And then she goes away. To, to go on a shoot in, uh, in Europe. And then she comes back and she calls me back. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a sequel. It's still good. It's perfect. And she's hanging out for a couple more days. And then she's going to leave again. So we have to do the ending of the movie again, which is fine. It was, it was fine both times. It was a little redundant, but it was fine. I'm not sure if I went to that movie that I would enjoy it because I'd be like, oh, that's so sad. Wait, she's back. Oh, there's the ending again. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't work narratively if it were a film, but nonetheless. So the day before she's leaving, I'm walking down the street with her, 14th Street here in New York City. Mind you, I am just having the greatest time. We're laughing, we're arm in arm, we're kissing, and we're walking down 14th Street, and who's walking towards me, who I haven't seen anywhere ever in six months? My ex-wife is walking towards me, and I'm like, oh my God. There she is, and I'm holding this beautiful woman, and my ex-wife just looks at me. I look at her. Nothing is said. I shrug my shoulders. 
watch her walk by. She looks back and kind of like with a what the fuck face. And I'm like, what the fuck is right? Ha ha. Nothing was said. And I looked at the woman I was with and I was like, you don't know what just happened. You don't know. what. This is it. This is great. That was my ex-wife. She's like, oh, my God. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. I think I actually looked up at God who I don't even believe in. And I said, thank you. Okay, it was a small thing, but it meant a lot. And if we could work on the career now, that would be helpful. Now, whether or not my ex-wife walked away feeling anything other than like, why doesn't he introduce me to this girl he's dating or that seemed a little rude? Like in my mind, you know, like I got her, whatever. That None of that matters. All I know is the obsession was lifted from wondering how that was going to unfold. And the weirdest thing about that story is... I was in Los Angeles like months later. And since that event, I'm, I'm now seeing that woman. That's another story entirely that I don't want to get into. But she was out in Los Angeles with me. And I was supposed to do an interview for a magazine at this coffee shop with this guy. And I didn't know where this coffee shop was. I'd never been to that part of town. I was only in L.A. for a few days. And this the woman I'm seeing was there. She's going to be staying at my house. So I tell her, just come with me. It's only going to take 10 minutes. We drive this part of town I never go to, never been to this coffee shop. I walk in with this woman, and in the corner, I recognize the guy who's sitting there at his computer. And it's my ex-wife's fiance, and I know it's him. And I'm like, how is this even possible? Both times, I don't run into these people for months, and there he is, and it's in this woman. I'm with this woman again. And he looks at me, and I know he knows who I am. And I'm sort of like, we doing this? Are we, are what, what are we going to do here? What's going to happen? It was sort of like, all right, here we are. And he nods at me and I nod at him. He puts down his computer, he gets up and I'm like, how you doing? He goes, good. I'm like, I know who you are. He's like, yeah, I know who you are too. Everything good? I say inside. I probably said something like, well, it's good to meet you. Uh, and we start talking about, you know, bullshit about my cat, you know, who my ex is going to pick up. And he's like, yeah, well, she's going to pick it up. And I'm like, well, where is she? Is she in town? And he's like, yeah, she's coming to get me in uh, in five minutes. And I'm like, you know, that makes me and you different. Because I would have so been on the phone with her telling her that I'd seen you if you were me. But he didn't do that. And sure enough, within a few minutes, the ex pulls up outside in the car. I'm sitting there. She sees me. She sees uh, the woman I'm with. She sees her fiance. She doesn't come in. She just sits out there. So I walked out, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? And then the car started to roll over my foot. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. And she's like, oh, sorry, I didn't do that on purpose. And I'm like, okay, how you doing? She's like, I'm fine. I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. What's been going on? She goes, I'm picking up my fiancé. Yes, I know. I just met him. Seems like a nice guy. Okay, well, take care. And then I went back into the coffee shop. I said, what are you, some magic woman? Are you some witch of coincidence? That that happens both times with you? Thank you so much again. So now I guess I've, I've gotten that out of the way. The awkward meeting, the uh, potential anger was buffered by being with somebody else. And uh, I really wish them the, the best of luck together. I really hope that they're both really happy and that um, everything that I was, he isn't. And that she's really comfortable with him. And that after about three or four years, she realizes that I was her one true love and that she can never have me ever again. And she has to hold that inside of her like a thorn in her detached, horrible heart. That's a fable. So... Are we podcasting? I've never yeah, podcasted before. We're just, <laughs> we're, we're just taping something. <laughs> that that voice you hear is, uh, if you're familiar with television and funny people, is Caroline Ray. Mark, that's like the nice thing you've ever said about me to me ever. Well, I mean, what do you want me to do? I All mean, right. when people say, you know, is Caroline Ray funny? I go, yes, yeah, she's funny. No, yep. no, you just totally added a question mark that is so bitchy. Oh, yeah, she's funny. No, there's more like definitive. Yes, she's very funny. Yes, I say that. Okay. All right. Fine. And sometimes I qualify it with like, she's a little crazy. Oh, 
What? Really? <laughs> really? Is that wrong? That's like you telling another wolf man that he looks like a wolf man. I mean, that's ridiculous, you furry beast. It's totally wrong. But little crazy. Define crazy. Well, crazy. Well, I know that, but what I'm saying... Loony. I'm saying that you should... I don't think that you're fooling anybody. That you... <laughs> I mean... You, you're definitely a just because I don't like advertise it and package it. Who's not? Okay, I've lived in New York for twenty years. I'm not crazy. No, you're not crazy, but you're a highly emotional, uh, excitable person. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> he's I know he's just provoking me within the first thirty seconds. I shouldn't have interrupted the intro. No, I think. That- Go on. I'm very highly excitable. Go I, ahead. I, I just hurt your engineer, your vocal engineer why, why, with that one. Why didn't you touch anybody when you came in? What's with the hand thing? Because I have a baby and I don't like, I, I just, you know, they're very lovely. They're both very clean looking. They probably are Virgos. They wash their hands and are you? Virgos? Virgo? Matthew, no. Virgo? What are you? A Leo. Leo. Brendan? Sagittarius. Okay, no. so I'm way off. Whatever. They're fire signs. Crazy. Crazy. I don't know why you think that. <laughs> Libra. Bossy Libra. Um, but, it, you know, I have a baby. I don't want to. you can wash your hands. I mean, what is it with this? Uh, you know, I have a baby. Uh, you know what? I, I will. I'll deep French kiss both of them on the way out, and I feel bad. What about me? I don't get a, uh, any of that action. <laughs> no. Right, okay. <laughs> you don't even get a handshake what? anymore. I know that. I, uh, I almost. You're dressed uh, in such a, like, grown-up manly grizzly adams ll bean kind of way it's bizarre it's my new thing i'm the jewish manly grizzly adams ll bean <laughs> kind of guy ll I, jewel what is it what is LL, it? I, almost, I can't even. it was almost you something. know what it was yeah. almost funny no, that's the other thing i had a baby and so all see, my I, estrogen level shrunk so I, I can't finish a sentence i never knock, say knock that. joke stump me is that, maybe that's what's wrong with me you have too much I, estrogen I no my memory's not as good and maybe it's my estrogen levels. Maybe it's because the more aware of life you become, the less you want to remember because of your naughty, naughty behavior in the 80s and 90s. Maybe that's true. Maybe that is true. That's my brain I taking care of I think that every me. year that you age, in exchange for the lack of collagen, you should be able to erase one bad sex memory from your head forever. I don't have any bad sex memories. Yes, but there's another part of the person involved, and maybe <laughs> you're being erased somewhere right this very moment as someone blows out their birthday candles. Probably not, but possibly. My wish to get Mark Marin out of my head. <laughs> I'm sure. sure that's been said. I'm sure that. <laughs> I'm sure that's been said. Well, no, it I used actually. to be to give you head. Now it's to get yeah, you out of their head. Absolutely. Well, usually they're they're one and the same. That <laughs> women. <laughs> <laughs> Women hate themselves for liking me, and that's... Why uh, is that? Why do they hate themselves for liking you? You're a very desirable uh, human being. I know. From a distance, quiet, when no one can see you, right. and they can just smell you. But let's get back to L.L. Bean, because I do have a <laughs> fixation with it. It is weird. You are a preppy sort of hippie. I don't know what it is, but I got the catalog last night. I get them, mm-hmm. and I don't throw them away. I literally sit on my couch. I sat on my couch last night looking at L.L. Bean clothes going, how can I make these mine? Because it, in the way... Bizarre. No, because they're so... But I've seen you in plaid. Maybe it's your upbringing. They're so bland. Right. That I think that there's some... They have integrity. It's an integrity thing in my head. Mm-hmm. Like L.L. Bean, made in America, reasonably priced, always looks stupid. But I... <laughs> I think that's their motto. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll buy the flannel. You will. You know, like the chamois shirts. Yeah, I but like you those. can pull it off. Like, you're never going to look like it's L.L. Bean when you're wearing them. That's exactly why. But you know what? How about that your jeans are so skinny and tight? What are those? Are these tight? They're too tight already? Oh, my these God. These are Levi's. Levi. Have you ever met any man more paranoid about his weight and appearance in your entire life? It's unbelievable. But it's literally, a- it's like the international way women greet each other. It's like, oh, my God, you've lost weight. You look great. You have to say it to Mark. And then he's like angry that you say it and angry if you don't. I know. So that makes me sensitive <sighs> and aware and a little insecure about my weight. You can blame my mother. <laughs> I know. Yeah. My mother who says, I don't know if I could love you if you were fat. <gasps> Are you going to say that to your new daughter? Okay, first of all, someone came up to me today. And first, every if one more person says, what's his name? And I'm like, what gave it away? The pink dress, pink hat, or pink, you know, it is a girl. And then they go, well, what's his name? I go, his name is Ava. Your name is idiot. What's wrong with you? And then I'm like, it's a girl. Well, would you you wouldn't go up to, it's because you don't have a lot of hair. You wouldn't go up to like a woman with a balding husband and say, hey, what's your wife's name? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> it's just a baby. And then this woman today said, because she's got lots of teeth and, and, and she's got, you know, the gapper that my whole family has. And she said, oh, she's going to need braces. And I literally wanted to punch her in the mouth and go, and so are you. And on your legs <laughs> as well. Don't ever say anything mean about my baby, you hateful bitch. Do you, uh, do, well, it's better that they don't go, what is it? Do uh, people say what? Is it? Well, human? Is that what I'm going to go? It's right. a love. It's a Martian. It's a Martian boy. Were you, were you worried about uh, your baby before you had it? 
Like, I mean, like, I was completely terrified. What are you talking about? I had, I swear to God, I had so many sonograms. I put them on a website and I called it my tubes. I- <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good one. <laughs> Were you, I can't even imagine. Yeah, I'm like, terrified, but I saw the baby. You see that there's because of the advanced, you know, advancement in technology. You can literally go and you see on the sonogram, you see every feature of the child in the womb. It's crazy. Oh. You can see it all, and then I'd be like, "Oh, what is that there?" And they're like, "That's blood," and those are, you know, yeah, you're the, you're, that's your uterus. But you can see. I knew exact. I mean, the technician used to say, "Oh my God, the baby looks so much like Kostaki." Oh, thank God. Thank God. Because let me tell you, right now she has red hair, and she's about six feet tall, and I've been on Conan 26 <laughs> times, so he wants a DNA test. I'm just saying. And this is, like, it's so amazing, because you wanted a baby a long time. I wanted a baby forever and ever. And you just, And I didn't think I was going to get one. And I went through the fun fertility of uh, the game show called The $10,000 Period. You did? <laughs> yeah. What does that I mean? Did. Well, you go, and you know they tell you that you have absolutely no chance in the world to have a baby unless, of course, you do this protocol. And and you know what I I just I think that there's I think people why because of your age much. yes because of my age because once you're over thirty five and let's just leave it at that um, <laughs> click 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 Google 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 <laughs> error IMDb wrong actually twenty four um, hate that stupid site anyway <laughs> it's awful can I tell you when we were young stalking was like a really calorie burning activity now it's like one click you know everything i know you had to change your major in college to go into a class where you could see somebody yeah now nothing, nothing. you can just look it up you literally it's like i'm going to imdb you i'm going to wire image you i'm going you know i always communicate with my stalkers because i find if you if communicate you, and by that he means date yes. live with yeah eventually marry uh-huh. uh-huh if you if you engage them eventually you'll disappoint them and you won't live up to what they thought you were and, and they'll go away that is hilarious i I think, though, if you stalk someone long enough, they'll eventually become your friend because they're bored. Because I, 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 I stalked uh, Benicio Del Toro to the point that he's like, hey, Caroline, how are you? Like, eventually, he surrendered. I did have a talk show but at the you, time that right. was easier rather than, you know. But, but do you know whether or not, like, if you're approaching, he says to his friend, here comes that girl. Oh, I'm sure. Like, you know who does that? Do you who? want to know the saddest thing in the world? Yeah. You know who, who literally, when she sees me, she, like, kind of looks away like, uh-oh, Looney Tune, around huh? the corner. Carol Burnett. Oh, it's so sad. Because I, she means so much to me that I can't help but, uh, it starts out the like, abusive. I, I, I'm like, you know, the, I, don't, I just want to be, I don't want to be a kid in your name and there we go, me, Carol. I wouldn't want to be around me either, but I, I, I once played poker next to Harvey Corman. I cried my eyes out too. There's somebody, it just, it meant too much to me. So she's the loveliest woman in the world, but when she sees me, she's like, I, no, I don't, I don't want to be cried on again by grandma over here with her baby. Oh my God. So you know, you've was it for you? Is there anybody that, you that, that, that I frighten? No, Most it, everyone. People. But yeah. no, anybody that you <laughs> like, you'd meet and go, "Oh my God, you meant so much to me." Yeah, I've 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 done awkward things. I had a weird in- exchange with uh, Larry David recently. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was very it was interesting because I saw him at the L.A. airport or at the New York airport going to L.A. Right. And he looks like Larry David, and I like <laughs> I like Larry David, but he he's just one of those people that I couldn't see any difference between him on. Screen and off. Right. And it started. Because he's allegedly looking, playing himself. Yeah. Right. So it sort of screwed my head initially. But then I did that thing where I walked by him to see if he would recognize me. Right. So I could talk on a level playing field with him. Right. And he didn't. And then I sat there, like, you know, festering, like, well, should I, you know, oh, should I do awful. this? And I decided to take the radio approach, like, hey, Larry David, Mark Marin, uh, you know, I'm a comedian. He used to host a radio show. He's like, oh my God, Mark Marin, I listened to you in the morning with the black guy, right? You know, <laughs> so, cause I, my partner was black and I'm like, yeah. So we ended up having this conversation about divorce, about radio, about comedy. I talked to him for like a half an hour. Wow. And the weirdest thing happened to me though was I started to, because I've watched the show enough and this has never happened to me. It I it started to feel like I was on an episode of the show, like I was checking my conversation. Right. Like there was a moment where he was getting on for first class and I was in coach and I literally right. said, OK, well, uh, I guess you got to get on now. Uh, great talking to you, my friend. And I said I, I was thinking to myself, I never say my friend <laughs> ever. Right. And Even I thought to was, your friends. Right. And I thought, was that an episode? <laughs> like and then I thought like he was going to get on the plane going, why does he say he's my friend? Is it right, really right. my friend? And he's oh, going to write a whole episode about me. <laughs> and I sat there festering about it the whole trip. That's so 
funny. To the point where I wanted to... Two narcissists I, flying on the same plane going, what's he going to say about me? What's he going to say about me? Right. But he has a bigger platform to say it about, but he's got a radio show. I admire those people that'll be listening. Oh my God, yeah. Right. And I and I had to stop myself from getting off the plane going, you know what? I don't really mean to say my friend. That, and then he would... You did like, not. No, I didn't. But I, oh. I had to stop myself from doing that. I love the girl in you. I think that's why I've been your friend for as long as I have. Because a woman would be like that. Like, obsessing, obsessing, like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. It's, it's like... I don't mind the girl in me. I just wish she didn't have an eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> it's a teenage girl. You have a teenage girl in I you. I know, but, I, yeah, but there's a couple problems. She has an eating disorder, and I can't have sex with her. <laughs> but maybe you're maybe you're a bit of a lesbian that way. Mm. Mm. Now it's getting complicated. <laughs> Wait, like, do you know that I was on Larry David's pilot? I saw you on that show, and, and he I, couldn't remember your name. Right, and I was I had like a huge crush on him for a long time because I'm... Oh, you're really crazy. Excuse me, I was dragged from a temple as a child. I'm only drawn to balding Jewish men. Okay, I always have been before he was famous, whatever. Okay. The Jewish man, it's their complete lack of interest in me. Anyway, and I'm a shiksa, and I thought that was a funny name until I found out what it meant. Anyway, um, he... <laughs> You know, my uh, grandmother said about shiksas. They're just for practice? Yeah. yeah I know. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> it's so terrible. Someone said that. Elliot Cooperstone's grandmother said that about my sister. I guess it shiksas was... Shiksas are for practice. It must be in the Talmud. I don't know how they all know it. Can I tell you, I performed in... Um, what's what do, call it? what do you call it? In the Catskills? Mm. At, you know, a um, Kutcher's or one of those places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear to God, no one has ever bombed so much in their entire life as me. First of all, who knew, uh, the guy who opened for me saying to dream the impossible dream. And then I came out and like, it looked like I had a lazy eye because I was like just out of the spotlight, but nobody told me the whole time. And it was like elderly Jewish people have never moved faster in their entire life. I have like seven words in Yiddish. I'm like, well, I was uh, engaged, but it wasn't beshert. And it's nice to be here with the whole mishpoka. And uh, now I know I'm causing you surus. And um, I know there's a big difference between a mitzvah and a mikvah. And then they were like, uh, is that fresh pot roast? I, anyway. <laughs> they didn't, you oh. did not use Yiddish. I swear to God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I I was panicked. Okay, wait. We were talking about Larry David. Oh. Yeah. Larry David. My father's name was Larry David Ray. And so when he and I, th- so when I did the pilot with Larry, they said, you know, it was just, it was the pilot. Nobody knew he was writing objectives or they go, just go over and humiliate yourself in front of Larry. And I was like, okay. And literally by the fourth time, I was almost in tears. I'm like, I really can't do it. Like I went over and I go, Larry David. Oh my God. My father's name is Larry David Ray. And he would just look at me like, awful. Awful. And then eventually I just said, it's Caroline, because he called me Caroline, and that's the only thing that worked. I'm getting that same look and feeling from the three of you now, but whatever. I almost threw up on Bo Diddley once. Wow. <laughs> Who hasn't? Okay. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, it was he, back in the day, it was, he was at the Lone Star. He didn't Star. know Mark when he drank and smoked, and I know he's very sober, and it's very and it's the bright way. He was quite an entertaining little person when he was under the influence. Sweaty and angry, Mark. Sweaty. He was so angry. He was so angry in the, about everything. I anything. remember the one, the first time we met, we were in the back we of got, someone's we had, car. We got in a fight. I know. Whose car was that? I told you that it was really funny that you did that joke about um, early pregnancy tests right. about how they act like it's so joyful, but you know, it's like some teenage couple going, you know. Fuck, yeah, yeah. Whose car was that? Was it Laura Keitlinger? Maybe. And you and I, yeah, we had a fight within five seconds of meeting each other. Oh, Friends had, for life. What, you, what can you say? You were so, like, so the waspy I didn't character. even know what i I'd never been called a wasp well, until I, I moved to New York. Were, I didn't yeah. know what I was. What, what, what did we fight about? I don't know. We got in a fight within, like, 30 seconds. This was, For I, months and months, we wouldn't talk to each other. It would be ridiculous. It was touch and go, like, two weeks ago. No, no, I, no. I saw him in Montreal, and I still, I, I can't believe someone can make me that angry still. Because <laughs> she asked me to come see her baby, and I couldn't make it over. The first for, ten and a half months. It's too long. And then you started sending me emails like, maybe you can meet her when she's a teenage girl. But that uh-huh. wouldn't be a good idea. Right. Yeah. Because that was appropriate. And then there was a line drawn. And like, then how about when think- I would call you and you go, I'll call you right back, which meant I didn't know that was code for never. I didn't know that I'll call you right back meant, no, I will not until the baby's 18 and maybe she'll be attracted to me. I didn't know that. But I... I didn't, I can't even. I apologize. I'm here now. Let it go. Cause like because I have, you kept on saying that you were like too bitter to meet a baby, which is really nice. Well, you kept saying it would make me feel better. It would I, because she has a joyful, beautiful energy around her. She's an amazing child. I and agree. Did you not, and don't you agree? And y- she's a Libra like you are. Yes, I felt like something uh, deep and dark had been lifted from me when that I met you. That is amazing. I think the fact that she hit you on the forehead and then put water on you and threw you in the baptism. That yeah, was also- yeah, and she she cried a little bit. I, I, I'm i usually very good with babies and cats. And you're, you're Excuse I, me, babies and cats? They're not the same thing. Although when I first had the baby, I did go... 
all the time because I was only used to cats. Look at the little baby. Look at the baby. He's a baby. Where's the kitty? Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> I know. Where's your Don't scratch your belly. She doesn't like it that much. Oh, my God. She's not even drinking. I would put my breast milk in a bowl. <laughs> oh, you're doing that? Yes. Do you have a pump? You know what? I do have a pump, and it is really... I remember the first time I was pumping, Kostaki, he's like, can I walk around the corner? Kostaki, your boyfriend. Yeah, I go, if you never want to have an erection again, ever, you will watch me pump. It is the grossest. First of all, you hear that noise, and you are literally in a pasture by yourself. Pump. It's... But, you know, it's important. I was not going to breastfeed. I got gestational diabetes, and I so I had no sugar the last 14 weeks because I controlled it completely. Right. I actually lost 12 pounds. I think it's hilarious. The only time in my life I've really consistently lost weight, I was in my final trimester of pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. And when I had the baby, I swear to God, they, I was in such a bad mood because I had no carbohydrates. I got asthma. I got bronchitis. I was really, they weren't, you know. See, and, babies are bad for you. Stop it. I'm sorry. I was, anyway, I ended up having a cesarean. and You did? <laughs> yeah. You gave up? No, I, oh, yeah, Mark. You know, <laughs> I gave up. <laughs> Women think that's really great. I'm going to hit you now. Just Get it out of me. I was it like, hurts too much. <laughs> no, that's how I had the baby. Oh. Anyway, I. <laughs> nice. Oh, please, never play this back for my child. Anyway, I. <laughs> so awful. I was a cesarean, by the way. You were. Yes. Well, that's really one vote for you know natural childbirth. Mm-hmm. Anyway, because your your mother probably didn't want to like squish your face or anything. No, I don't. I think she, I don't think she wanted to hurt her figure. Oh really? I, or her? Well, you know what the what? W- the gain the weight gain is yeah. kind of the figure hurting. But anyway, yeah. I said to Kasaki, he he was so afraid of me because I was so angry, and he's like, you know, breastfeeding is really good for the baby, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. It's just. Disgusting. And of course, the minute the baby was born, and I was literally, I looked at the baby, and I'm like, oh my god, does she have eyelashes? Could I have some Hagen does? That's what I said when I saw the baby. Okay, <laughs> so after I'd like been resugared and I felt better, of course I breastfed, yeah. and it's the most painful thing. Breast, uh, that's what the epidural is for. Yeah, to, it's, it's unbelievably painful. Everyone says how natural it is. No, but it start, it's re- it's good though, right? It's the most beautiful thing in the world, and it's totally bonding. And and I'm does no, it still hurt? Um, only when she, uh, today she head butted me and bit me. I was like, oh, are we watching little baby wrestling movies? Why yeah. are we doing that? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it doesn't hurt. It's ridiculously painful, but they put so much pressure on you at the hospital. They literally say to you, if they, when they ask you if you're going to breastfeed, oh. they say it like this. Do you love your baby? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> You know what's so sick about my head is that like I guess maybe it's because I'm narcissistic or what, but I'm just trying maybe. to picture what it would <laughs> what it would feel like to breastfeed, and it's not even a possibility. I'm a man, but I'm like trying to say like, well, if she says it hurts. I'm sitting here trying in my head like, what if I had to breastfeed? But you don't what know that ridiculous? they have invisible shark teeth, rows and rows of them. It's a really you think it's so natural, but it's the most rewarding thing, and you have to do it for your baby. So let's talk about. Uh, I'm a lactivist now. <laughs> do you do it in public? Never. See, I couldn't see you because I don't leave the house. Um, but no, have I ever done it in public? You know what? I'll go into like a dressing room in a clothing store. I, I don't think you have to shove it in anybody's face. You're not one of those people at parties who's like, excuse me, and then just you know throws the blanket over and still has a conversation with somebody. Only if someone is wearing a poncho, playing guitar, and singing "Kumbaya," would I feel in any way comfortable doing any of those things. <laughs> Never, ever, ever. And what? Uh, and, and you're not married, and that's good. <laughs> 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 Let's just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a, a summation. Uh, I agree. And you're not married. Is that good? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I tried kind of twice. Painful. I know. I'm sorry. That was terrible. Yeah. And your first wife shared a birthday with me. Oh, really? Yes. She, I, I why, guess, why do I remember that and you don't? How into astrology do I have she, to be? She's a therapist now. See what I did? Wow. <laughs> See what I did. That is narcissism. I divorced someone. See what I did? Years later, even though she wasn't near me, uh, she, she became a therapist. No, her dad was a therapist. He was? Yeah. So she's carrying on this family tradition. So, uh, And why don't you have babies? Mm. <laughs> is that- I, yeah, I, you know, I don't crave them. And I don't, uh, I mean, I probably could have had one with my first wife. And there was no way that my second wife was going to have a, my baby. She actually said that to me. That was one of the most painful, horrible moments in our marriage. She's wow. like, you think I'm going to bring babies into this? Oh, oh. awful. Uh-huh. And, uh, but I kind of want... What do you wa- think about that? In really the peak of I anger, wanted to have a baby with her, though, you know, because she was so genetically superior? stable. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I can finally put an end to this ridiculous line of Marin insanity right. if, if only she'll have my baby. 
Right, because you know what? There's no contribution from the male in terms of the DNA. So just be, why didn't she just clone herself? Why well, clean Dummy, it up. why do you think it was going to be, what, you're going to wash the sperm and take out the crazy? Well, it, I had a 50-50 chance. You yeah. know what I mean? At least I'd get no, some. No, you have got, in Mendel's peds, you got the giant crazy, the big two Cs. There's really? No, yeah, there's no little C in your in You know how I want to have a baby, and this is kind of perverse, I guess, is that I wouldn't mind if a woman came up to me and said, you know, I have something important to tell you. Right. I had your child six years ago. And and then I can just sort of step in and go, well, that's, I'm sorry you went through that trouble, but I'd like to hang out with the baby now. Right. You the know, fact like, that, you know, so many people, when they, when they really talk about a dream that they want in life, they say, I wouldn't mind if. <laughs> yeah. That's an affirmation that's very powerful to use. I right. wouldn't mind if six years from now someone came up to me. And, <laughs> and this is, and then they show you like a little baby and it's got a beard. Yeah. Yeah. And glasses. It's, and it's like a total yeah. hipster. And you're like, oh no. Uh, yeah. My genes were not destroyed. No, I. You I would love a baby. So, you know what? It's I just, just. I can't barely, I can barely manage uh, a cat. And I, I don't know. But I, think I, how much you love your cat. I do, but I'm not always great to the cat. <gasps> I mean, I'm nice to it, but sometimes I have conversations where I'm like, you, you say know, bad things in front of it. It's okay. But no, you I, like- I literally say, is this, is that, is that, that's how it's going to be? You're just going to sit over there. That's how we're going to do this. Oh my God. Excuse me. You, you treat your cat like you treat your friends. <laughs> Well, I mean, there are certain points where I think I understand the cat, and then he's acting like an idiot. So I'm like, yeah, well, that's fine. All right, you don't sweep on the bed. Go, go sweep in the drawer. If that's what, if that's the way you're going to be today. So I don't think you're supposed to do that with a baby. You have to maintain a certain consistency. Drawer sleep is never recommended when they're very young or ever. That's well in, in the depression. That's where a crib Unless was. In, a crib in, was a drawer. I, or a I know in Benjamin Button that riveting film. Uh, that was the beginning. Yeah. The baby's asleep in there. So her name's Ava. Ava Ray Economopolis. And I've already explained to her the Economopolis is silent. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't understand? Nobody wants that as a last name. It's terrible. Has it, have you, uh, has anyone um, of your friends other than me? Um, Not seen the baby? Yeah. Uh, no. People are still um, active in my life and importance. They've all seen the baby within the first 30 days, Mark, which is appropriate. Why are you going to bring up something we're having a little anger over? Because I, but then I'd have are to. You list, are you dating any of your um, stalkers these days? No. I, I guess I am, actually, yes. <laughs> Gee, Mark, how she is it that in... women come up? How, how is it? How does a woman find so a place easier. in your heart? It's so much they easier. They just come up and go, I like you, and you go, fine. Yes. Is there something <laughs> wrong with that? Is there another way that I'm missing? Why? What, how much work has and, to be? And how, many, how, how young are they, the girls that are attracted to you now? Well, I went through a little period where where there were some early twenties going on, which was oh my god! Well, I had to go through that. And what, uh, the, what? Why? When? What do you mean? Why? Did they speak English? How? Is there a mystery? Yeah, of course they spoke English. They they had some things to resolve around their father issues, right? And and their and their crushes on professors. And you and, do f- sort of feel that, except that yeah. you smell nice, right? Yeah, and, and, and you're uh, much more bathed. Yeah, and I think uh, that I helped. I them had through a little that. fling with the professor. Oops. You did? Yeah, I did. When, how old were you? You know, it was very annoying. I still did not do that well in the class. I really hurt my self esteem. <laughs> I was like, seriously? I mean, come on. That's hysterical. Who's yeah. a, I just heard somebody talk about that. Really? Yeah, that I, some, little... I, I can't remember if you it know was what? A I was t- no, I went back. I was twenty two, and he was ancient. Um, I, I heard, he wasn't married. I, I wasn't married, but he was still my professor. I can't remember who was talking about it. it must have been a comedian. Who said that he had, when he was in college, he had talked a girlfriend into sleeping with a professor of his so he could get a better grade. Oh my God, that's hilarious. And she did it, but she forgot to mention that. <laughs> oh! She forgot to mention it. She just remembered the sleep with the professor part. <laughs> right. That is so funny. And now I've got to figure out who it is. Who said that? Thing? Maybe it was, um, who's our mutual friend? Tom Agnew. Tom Agna. Agna. He was the guy that told me about the colonic. Have you ever had a colonic? I have. Ugh. Haven't you? First of all, it's you like have. it's yes, of course I have. It's that I'm way too waspy. Nothing happened. Are you kidding? My bowels are waspy Canadians. They're like, I'm sorry, nothing could happen. But about forty minutes later I thought I was gonna die. But yeah. I was alone then at least. Yeah. It wasn't like when they're narrating, now we're gonna see some food that you ate. Oh the no, I didn't get narration. And the, hey, somebody had wheat. You're oh. like, Oh no, off. So I don't funny. need that. Mark is look at Mark is squeamish. Mark, who can say anything? We found an area you're grossed out by. I, I'm grossed what was out your when, like? people, when, when people talk about organs. I already discussed my colonic on another show. Oh, okay. it, it was it, it was not it. something I did twice. Okay. I actually canceled the second appointment because it was too awkward. It was aw- no. I I, can, I cannot imagine that it's good for you or people would be sitting on fire hoses all across the country. My it's dad just, said it's not. It's not. 
It's not natural. No, it's, it gets rid of all kinds of stuff that yeah. you need. Yeah, like your liver and yeah. other organs, little yeah. ones that go out, you know. Organ talk bothers me. Okay. Isn't that funny? Is that because both of our fathers are doctors? Aren't they, what? Yeah. He's still a doctor. But now it's just so the, the idea, if I really think about you know the, what they do and, and how essential they are and that they could go bad, I'd have a problem. Are you talking it. about doctors or organs? Parents. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was it. <laughs> yeah. Parents. They're uh, so essential what they do. It's important that you have them and they could go bad. Yeah. Mine went bad very early on. <laughs> they did. <laughs> so, um, mine are good. I really like mine. So your, your, your comedy's good? I really, it's slowly coming back to me. Having a baby is like having amnesia. It slowly comes back. So my brain is, you know. Um, I was on a series called Sorted Lives. Yeah. Which, again, you never saw. It was right beside my baby. And um, it's like, te- it's a Desperate Housewives in a Texas trailer Was park. it even on television, though? Thank you. I'm it's sorry. A, it's, it's a podcast, podcast on um, ABC, NBC, CBS. Which one are we on? Okay. I don't want you to try turning Someone on, your... on a podcast is yeah. making fun of my show. It was yeah. on Logo. Yeah, turn on your computer and go to iTunes, which is bigger than Logo. Anyways, go ahead. See the bitterness? It's still there. What, and how yet, much that's shit what draws I me to him. Seriously. I know. He's trying to be nice to me. Believe me. If we were not being recorded, he would be even... I've been so be, nice I know. To you. You've never been this nice to me in 20 years. See, is, if I came to see your baby any sooner, it would have been horrible. No, it wouldn't have been horrible. I just clearly, the next time we ever go out, we need two microphones and you have to be <laughs> recording so that you feel compelled to be nice to me. Um, no, it was, it, it, you know who was in it? Who? Olivia Newton-John. Oh, she's good. Yeah. She saw me do comedy once. She did? Yeah. Mac, and you're I want, really good. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to have sex with her, but I wanted to have sex with her, like, the When she was Sandy. Her. Yeah. Literally? But you know what? I still did. You did? You did? Yeah, she came with her daughter, and I thought that would be inappropriate. To, yeah. to Well, not to have sex with both her and her daughter, but to actually, you know, come on to her. Have you ever done that? No. Had sex with a mother and a daughter? No. I don't. Hold on. Oh, oh gee. God, stop it. Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's like going to a file. <laughs> I'm How, what's the most people who have been in a room when you've been having sex? No, I never did that kind of thing. I'm not, I'm not perverse. It's not even perverse. I, I mean, I just it seems like a lot of responsibility. To, and, uh, you, uh, one is enough. You know, two. <laughs> Two women there. I mean, I even I don't know. I, I've done. I did it in college uh, a couple of times. Two women didn't work out. It was uh, when I was younger because one of them freaked out and you know started crying, and left the room, and I had to have sex with the other one while the other one was packing her luggage because she had a breakdown of some kind. And then, uh, and then that it is out. like the most Mark Maron menage a trois. That is so. Uh, what was one? One was crying. One was packing. That's hilarious. Yeah, Sorry. but it had nothing to do with me. Uh, what, really? What happened was I was being used by one to get so because she wanted to sleep with her friend, right. right? But the friend didn't really realize this until we were all in the bedroom together, and then she freaked out after I had sex with her, and her friend was sort of there. Like literally, it became this weird thing. We all started together. I know, and then one person's going to feel left out, right? In the Venn diagram, well, you're like, hi, my hands are free, all by myself. Well, over here's here. what happened. One, Lonely. We were all started together, and then one goes to to make a phone call. No. Yeah. And <laughs> and so I'm, I'm left with one of them who, you know, who was uh, the one who the other one wanted to sleep with. So I, I have sex with her, and then the other one comes back in, and then the one I had sex with sort of freaked out. And so she's like, woman, I can't handle this. Okay. So she starts to pack something, and we're in her father's bedroom, which is already weird. Uh, cause the, the father's at home. And I, and then I had sex with the other one, which is no small feat, even at any age. <laughs> and then it was just awkward, and they ended up arguing, and I ended up leaving. It was hot. Really hot. I think I'd approach it differently now. <laughs> Good sex always ends in an argument. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it starts with an argument. Okay, who was the first girl? I'm not talking about like your actual, like what, like age 11, 12, whatever. Who was the first girl who broke your heart? Her name was Mary Christofferson. Mm-hmm. Was uh, she Chris's daughter? I, I wish. All I remember is she had a gap in her tooth. Oh. And I was, in, I was in second grade, mm-hmm. and uh, she wasn't Jewish, and that's always an issue. Uh, in she had sense. Christ in her last name. There was a bit of that's a tip-off. Right. Okay. And she didn't like ice cream. Clearly not that, Jewish. That I remember. Uh-huh. The first one that really broke my heart. Well, what happened? Why didn't she like you? Who the hell knows? I was in second grade. Did you have your beard then? Uh, no, but I'm sure I had no boundaries and was <laughs> trying to do things I didn't even understand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a pathetic story. It, when I was in like seventh grade, I had this crush on this 10th grader named Jessica. Jessica Jameson. Uh-huh. I thought she was spectacular. Jenna. Did she change her name to Jenna later in no, life? No, no, no. <laughs> But I wrote a song about her, okay? Oh. And she was going out with this other guy, this guy Ted, who was also in 10th grade. Right. And me and my band 
of the seventh or eighth graders, we played the song for her oh. and in front of everybody and everybody oh. knew who it was. And uh, and after we got done singing it, she gave me a big hug and a kiss, and and and, and that was enough for me. And then Ted swugged me in the stomach. No. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah. He what? swugged a little eighth grader in the stomach for having a crush on well, his girlfriend. He's probably selling Amway now, very unsuccessfully somewhere in the Midwest. I don't know. I think I'll Facebook him. That is real. Hey Ted, fuck you. Do you remember the song? Who's? <laughs> Yeah, it's horrible. No, come on. You got to remember the lyrics. Come on. Uh, I think it was Jessica, you're beautiful. Um, uh, your eyes are crystal blue or something. <laughs> Jessica, I love you. You know, I really do. Uh, when Jessica, I, I love you. And I'm a short, I soon to be you. bearded Jew. Yeah. No? Yeah, that should that, that That was rhyming. I'm, I'm literally feeling you know more vulnerable now than I really need and to. I, and, I, and, and I had to make fun of it. That's, That's okay. very sweet. Yeah, and I did, and I don't think uh, I, I I didn't have sex you know successfully until, until you were thirty. I didn't master it till I was in uh, in um, in college, and I went out with a woman who couldn't have an orgasm, but forced me to continue to have sex with her. Like I had to learn how to have sex because she would not tolerate me having. Uh, was she uh, an angry professor? She was angry. But uh, but I've talked to her since. She has since learned how to do it. So if you look back on all the women that you've slept with, which yeah. is 100. Oh. Boy, the show's only 17 hours long. All right. What's the, what are the top three traits that you keep finding in women? Uh, uh, a little bit of anger uh-huh. towards me. Uh, towards I you, like of, a little bit of disdain for you? No, no. Uh, like underneath, there's like, you know, they're always sort of like, oh, you know, really nice up front. Right. But underneath, it's like, what's the matter? You know, like there's something like that. No, and but then, is that anger towards you or anger towards men? I think it's anger towards men. OK. Um, uh, and also the ones that I'm really compelled towards are the ones that argue with me. Really? Yes. That's so, unfortunate. You know what? I do think that knowing you for as long as I have, you need conflict to exist. You are not somebody... Who win it no, all. I don't. I do not. <laughs> Caroline, it's so lovely to see you, and I can't wait to see your baby again. Mark, it was really great. Mm. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> now we're back to where we belong. <laughs> I love you. Love you too. Bye. Okay. Well, Caroline really seems to know you, Mark. We've been friends a long time. She's got all this great insight into you, and she still likes being with you, apparently. that's That bodes well for us. I guess, except that, you know, she was actually, we we talked, her and I, and she's also a woman, and a lot of times you don't really... I'm sorry I can't be a woman. Oh, God. Why are we here already? This is a few with Matthew, clearly. <laughs> I feel like now there's pressure because, you know, we've established this dynamic and, you know, you're, you're my friend and, and now like you're the guy on the show and now, I'm still your friend. No, I know, but I, it's like, I don't want it to be forced. I don't want the dynamic to be forced. Like now we're playing these roles where you're Matthew and I'm Mark and we've got to do the Matthew and Mark thing. Yeah. That, that you know, that's a sort of that, what do you, you know, that Heisenberg uncertainty principle interpretation that could happen. But you know what? I don't think we're going to have that problem because I am me. Up, back up. What the fuck is a Heisenberg? At, what? Brent, Brendan knows what I mean. Yeah, that was that blimp that went on fire and it crashed. Exactly. Oh, the humanity. No, it wasn't. What is it? What are you talking about? The Heisenberg infidelity it's, you principle? You know, there's that popular way of interpreting that quantum physics principle. How popular principle. is it? that uh, A popular way of interpreting yeah, it? Yeah, because it's not strictly true. Apparently, the math doesn't bear that out. But the way people understand it is, you know, something that is observed is changed by being observed. Once you see something, it's not the way it was before you saw it, you know? It's like your mind makes the world. Do we want to go Hindu on this or we want to stay quantum? I just find that, like, for me... I'm I'm a smart guy, and you know if you can just explain it to me like people who talk to people and not people who are trying to prove something to people, I would be a lot happier. You, like, you never it, heard what "long in the tooth" meant before. I had to look it up, and <laughs> I I didn't know if it meant that she had she was disfigured, or whether you know it, it, it turns out that means she's getting old. Right, I knew that. I know, but all these things are very cute. You know, it's a cute saying, oh, long in the tooth. It's yeah. a cute saying. The well, Heis- she's, the she's Heisenberg. being bashful about saying I'm a model who's getting old. So I thought that was endearing. Yeah, but, but the Heisenberg principle. I yeah, mean, that means, you know, now that I, you, you've heard some good things about us, you know, I, I was trying to tell you that we had a good thing here. 
you now you hear some feedback that confirms that we have a good thing going here. Yeah. And you're worried, like, oh, my God, we're going to be self-conscious about it now that we know. What are we going to do? We're going to make it fake. I would be self-conscious if I was dropping things like the Heisenberg structure. Well, that, that would make sense because that's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You really never heard that? I'm not trying to be all whatever. Well, no, I can pretend like I heard it, but does it, does it and play a part? And I can pretend part? like I'm on equal footing with you. You are on an equal <laughs> footing with me. You just have to, you, you seem to not have, have I, I arcs don't. over the point where you realize, like, maybe I don't have to talk all this bullshit all the time. Like, don't you get Wait, tired I, of, huh? I talk bullshit? Am I not, am I not making sense? You to couldn't you? explain to me. What what the Heisenberg infidelity principle means without saying the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? Yeah. Look, I'm not a quantum physicist. I read okay, layman's let's, books let's, on the subject. All right. Let's, let's put it this way. Okay. If you were a woman, like I would be Again, having, with me becoming a woman. Okay. Right. I would have this conversation with you. I would say, what does that mean? Why couldn't you just say that? Don't you have that? You were telling me about a woman you were going out with who is constantly trying to blah, blah, blah you. Yeah, well, I don't think she means to blah, blah, blah me. I think she's just saying things that are coming to her mind, and it's kind of cute and endearing, but they're often embarrassing. Exactly what happened just now with me. Did I say something that was embarrassing to you? Well, if I was sitting with mixed company who didn't know what the Heisenberg infidelity principle is, I would say, like, I'm sorry, my, my, my friend Matthew is trying very hard to impress everybody, uh, maybe someone should Google it. Am I impressive? I'm saying that sometimes people, like, you'd be impressive, like, if this were for the first date, I'd be like, wow, that, that, that woman's really smart. And I'd go Google some shit, and then the second date, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, she's doing it again. Yeah, when it, are we the just seams gonna, are when, showing. When are but we this just is just me, Mark. This is really me. This is, I'm, not, I'm not putting on airs. How would you react to that if, I, if, 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 if a woman did that to you? I would, How do you react to I would to want women? a second date. And then what happens? And then what happens after the second date? You would look for a way to figure out how to play her game so you could win. Say more about that? I mean that like if someone's like a smarty pants like you and, and it has to have the last word all the time, like no, you No, I don't. I'm sorry, you did that joke earlier. Like you? And you just have to have the last word all the time? Eventually No, I don't. Listen to me. If you're going out with a woman who's All like, right, I'm listening. All right, who's like that? Where does that go? What is it really based on? Because we're talking about intimacy, right? It, yeah. So you're just based on this sort of petty, like, oh, she's trying to outsmart me. And I'm at an age now, really, well, I'll tell you, where I'm, I, it's just, I find it, it's, it's cute, but I'm tired. And, and you should just say what you mean. But that is what I mean. What I tried to say in fewer words was the fact that we know something, that's, the fact that we see it is now changing what it is that we see. That is what that principle is popularly interpreted to mean. Well, I don't feel that it changed at all, given the, the, what we just talked about. And, and, and Heisenberg can go fuck himself. Ha, huh, how's that for a last word? Blow me. Thank you for joining us. I want to thank Caroline Ray for coming and sharing the Caroline Rayness, the Caroline Ray of sunshine. Uh, thanks to my, uh, my friend Matthew who people seem to have taken a shine to. Uh, I want to thank the folks at Punchline Magazine, punchlinemag.com. And again, if you need my CDs, they are available on iTunes. And if you want to email us with your what the fuck moments, WTFPod at Gmail. And please go to justcoffee.coop. Get yourself some of this coffee. I can't drink any more today because I don't know if I can take it. I'm already hearing voices and I have nothing left in my intestines. Thanks for listening.